So why do Q and Guinan really hate each other? And are we going to find out the truth behind it from Picard Series 2? Welcome to Sidetrack, your sci-fi TV and movie channel. So I recently watched a video on another channel and it basically argued that Guinan gained her powers from her experience with the Nexus. When she was transported and ripped from the Nexus by the Enterprise B, she somehow gained her ability to know and to sense when time and things have changed. So when the Enterprise C came through that rift and time changed, Tassi Yar appeared, etc., Guinan sensed it. It's also maybe why she senses Q and Q's presence in the season two episode Q Who. But it actually made a couple of really interesting points and a couple of points in that video that I just completely disagree with. One, in that episode Q Who, Q appears in Ten Forward with Picard. Moments before, Ten Forward was full of people and he clicked them and they all disappeared. But Guinan was behind the bar. She didn't disappear. So does that mean she is somehow immune to Q's powers? Hold that thought, we're going to come back to it. Also in that exchange between Q and Guinan, he says that the last time he saw Guinan, the imp as he calls her, was two centuries before. So Q and Guinan dislike each other for something that happened two centuries before this incident in Q Who. So I'm going to point out that it happened in 2365. Now, the Nexus incident happened a little under a century before that. So whatever happened between Q and Guinan actually happened at least 100 years before the Nexus event. And 100 years before, and this is important, the Borg's invasion of the Elorian homeworld. So to understand why Q and Guinan hate each other, I think we have to look at Elorian's powers and we have to have a look at what we know about Q. So the Elorian's powers. They seem to be a little vague and a little fuzzy, but we have to try to read between the lines a little bit. For one, that incident at Q-Who where Guinan's behind the bar and seems to be immune to Q's powers is one part. Another thing is when time has changed and time and the whole universe has changed, she doesn't seem to be completely understand what has happened, but she knows something has happened. She knows it isn't right. She knew that Tasha Yar was supposed to be dead and was not supposed to be there. But she seemed a little fuzzy on the details. It was like she was sort of just had woken up from a dream. She could remember it, but it was vague. We also then have to look at the incident between again Q and Guinan on 10 forward in the episode Q Who. Guinan approaches Q ready to almost attack or at very least defend herself. Again, maybe that is because she has the ability to be immune to Q's powers. Now, if we think about what we know about Q in that instance, that he is a bit of a trickster, that he likes playing games with other races. Look at everything he did, testing and trying to get us to prove ourselves in the entire exchange between TNG and Voyager. I have to wonder, how would Q feel about a species of Elorians that were potentially immune to those powers. Now, the other thing we know about the Elorians is that they travelled amongst the stars a long time before we did. We see episode with Guinan on Earth hundreds of years before we even developed space travel. They were a species known as the Listeners that travelled amongst the stars to learn about other species. This would suggest they were technologically very advanced and even far more advanced than we were. So is it possible that the Q did take an interest in the Elorians, like he took interest in humans and the Federation later? Maybe John Delancey's Q and maybe other Q of this continuum had interactions with the Elorians. Maybe they tested them in a similar way that they tested us. And were frustrated then by the way the Elorians were able to resist the Q's abilities or even be immune to them. Perhaps they did what they did to us and a Q clicked his fingers and introduced the Elorians to the Borg. This is maybe why just as Q is, clicks his fingers and shoots the Enterprise across the galaxy to have this first confrontation with the Borg, the Guinan shouts out, no, stop, Q, don't. Maybe that's because she knows exactly what Q was about to do because he'd done it before. 
he'd done it to her species. Now, humanity survived their first encounter with the Borg, which I actually generally believe was a test by the Continuum to, see the, to test the resilience, basically, of the Federation. But we survived by the skin of our teeth, and we survived in lots of ways by luck. But that really kick-started a massive technological advancement, definitely in weapons and other technology, for the Federation. But it also changed the, our entire culture and the way we perceived ourselves as explorers. The Federation was completely and utterly changed following its incident with the Borg and the Battle of Wolf 359. Now, perhaps the Lorians weren't as lucky as we were when they first encountered the Borg, and obviously they weren't. Now, there is another reason why I suspect that this could be the case. The Elorian homeworld cannot be too far away from the Federation. The refugees came to the Federation for protection and met Kirk on the Enterprise B. Their homeworld can't have been in the Delta Quadrant where we know the Borg come from. So they must have been much closer to the Alpha Quadrant, somewhere within the Alpha Quadrant. Now, if that's the case, why did the Borg attack them the way they did? Maybe it was because Q did exactly what they did to us and the Borg became interested in the Elorian species. This, this makes me actually think about another point as well, that the Q are actually quite afraid of the Borg. In the episode Q Squared, where we see Q Jr., Q grabs hold of his son and throws him down to the captain's chair and says, If the Continuum have told you once, we've told you a thousand times, don't antagonise the Borg. Maybe that is because the Borg, even though at the moment, are something the Q tend to play with. They understand that the Borg could, one day, become as powerful as they are. And that is a massive threat to the Continuum. If that is the case, why would they introduce a species like the Elorians to the Borg, a species that has the innate abilities to maybe be immune to Q's powers? Because that power and that ability would be assimilated into the Borg. So that is the one downside of my argument. Now, will we, in Picard Series 2, get any answers to these questions of the relationship between Gein and Picard and the Q? This is a golden opportunity for those questions to be answered. But, in all honesty, it's not going to happen. There, I actually don't think we're going to see a lot more of Guinan in the actual series than we already have done in the advert. I think she'll only be in it for maybe five, maybe ten minutes at most. I think they will continue this strange and um, mysterious character that Guinan is and not answer anything. Not because they're particularly clever writers or because they want to continue that mystery for some reason, but because they're lazy writers and they can't be bothered to think of a good answer. There is also that opportunity for the question of why is Q so interested in humanity to be answered? And again, from what we see from the advert, I suspect we're not going to get answers to that either. I think that it's going to be far more likely again that when the Q leaves, we don't have any answers for why he's interested in humanity and actually probably more questions. We have another golden opportunity in this season of Picard, though, for the Q to appear and go, El Capitan, why are you an android? Click his fingers and make Picard a human again. He could also then click his fingers again and erase that from our consciousness so we can pretend that that last episode of Series 1 never happened. So, guys, what do you think? Now, I have to say... The theory about Guinan gaining her abilities after being ripped from the Nexus was actually put forward by Ronald D. Moore, who actually wrote the film, the script, for Generations, so he should know, right? Um, but does his explanation for that make any sense? Please get in the comments and you tell me. But also, what do you think about my theory about why Q and Guinan hate each other? Is it possible that the Q actually did destroy, via the Borg, the Elorian homeworld? And... What do you think Picard Series 2 is going to tell us about this relationship? Are we going to learn anything new? Or are we just going to get more questions and more disappointment from the Picard series? If you are new to the channel, please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. It really helps us out. Also, you become a member of the channel and become a fully-fledged side tracker. Hit that join button. Please, as always, guys, stay safe and I will see you next time.